Um, old Vinny Mac. Is, Vinny Mac. Uh, back, Good old he's Vinny back Mac. in the news again since the oh. last time we got together. Oh. And and that is because he is going to be on a Netflix documentary. Oh um, boy. And I have a couple questions for you, but I want to show you something first. Oh, I bet you do have a few questions. Oh, that, God damn. That is the poster oh. for the for the documentary. The puppet master. That's what Take it in. named it. Notice the colors, red, yellow, black, kind of yes. communist sort of dictator, yes. autocrat, puppet dictator, master. Dictator, dictator, yes. Okay, so I mentioned this. This is a six-part docuseries. Yes. It's going to debut on Netflix September the 25th. Was wow. originally announced in August of 2020 that mm -hmm. they were going to do this. Yeah. And it is going to be September of 2024. Easy. Um, well, this I, is the uh, state. You saw the poster, Medusa, because I want to yeah. get all your thoughts on this once I finish yeah. our little summary here. You saw the poster. This is what it said in the article. The goal is to pull back the curtain and reveal the true Vince McMahon. Holy shit. The iron curtain. Yeah, there you go. Look at the illusions, right? The, yeah. Chris Smith, one of the executive producers and, and a man responsible for producing the Tiger King, just so you kind of have a point of reference as where his modus operandi is, says, <laughs> Over the four years of production, the story evolved in truly shocking ways, culminating in some extremely harrowing allegations. Wait the a minute, what's his name? Go ahead. Chris Smith. The product, final product is a revealing documentary that we believe offers a rich and nuanced portrait of the man and the complex legacy that he left behind. Hmm. Piggybacking this, it's also jointly produced by Bill Simmons, who's worked for HBO and ESPN. He was the Boston sports guy, you probably remember. Mm -hmm. 200 hours of interviews and footage. Um, Raw moves to Netflix September the 13th. The documentary premieres September the 25th. And I have two quotes from two wrestlers for you. The first is from RVD. Who has reported by Fightful and uh, actually said it to Dominic D'Angelo on his podcast, One of a Kind. They did contact me a couple times actually about participating in interviews. Wasn't something that I opted to do. It wasn't a choice that would be conducive to my position in the <laughs> business and industry. So I passed. I told them I look forward to seeing it. And I do. I hope that they cover a lot of different um realms instead of jumping to the main pillars of whatever story they choose to tell. So that's Rob's perspective. Cody Rhodes, we just talked about Bash of Berlin before we hit the record button. Yes. He was asked during the press conference that WWE loves, just like AEW, and he said in terms of, am I going to watch it? Not to sound cheeky, um, but I'm deep in a Game of Thrones rewatch, and that is a hell of a lot of commitment. He went on to clarify that WWE wasn't involved in making of the documentary, as he said, as mm. had previously been reported. I think there's a bit of misinformation in terms of WWE has no involvement in this documentary, as far as I know. He affirmed, Rhodes then admitted that he would likely watch it at some stage or another. So this is our first topic. Vince McMahon getting a Netflix documentary. Uh, obviously, he is not without controversy. He is not without, you know, people think what they think of Vince, black eye on the business, whatever, Medusa. But I have a couple of the points that weren't in here. Number one, Nick Khan is very close to these two producers. So he's a very high executive in WWE who's high, who's who has a good relationship with both Bill Simmons and Chris Smith. So the question I want to ask you is a question I've asked four different people. Um, that are in the wrestling business and everyone's given a different answer. So I want yours. Was the documentary part of closing the Netflix deal, raw moving to Netflix for a billion dollars on that contract from your point of view? That's interesting. And I'm going to think uh, of business terms. So if I was Netflix, and I am in conversation or have a pre-write or a uh, commitment of some sort already on Vince McMahon. Um, and then 
later on the transition is to sell WWE, but not knowing fully that that may take place because this was uh, planned years ago because I remember them contacting me and wanting me to be involved in this. And we spoke quite a few times. And I said, at the end of the day, I just I cannot be involved in this right now. Um, there, It was during the time right when the Me Too movement, I think, was happening and the whole scandalous things were starting to come out. Uh, there are probably people involved now that it's out that probably wish that they weren't involved. Um, I, I think that if it's a double or triple swerve on their part to swerve Netflix, to say, look, you have this. We know you do. There's a lot of things happening and coming out. We've got to cover our ass. We are going to, uh, let's say, fish for a buyer, which they were in the means of, and it was kind of hush-hush years ago. They were putting everything in order. So the core group knows what's happening long before the main players or even the audience and then fans and whatnot. So when there is a corporate takeover, it's usually happening a, happening a year or two years before anybody on the inside shell that even works for the company knows. So they were already planning and putting things together because I've already been through two corporate takeovers with companies and I know how it rolls. <laughs> been a part of it, right? So, and, and then again, if there's other things happening, if there's scandalous or if there's financials and then You've got to get all of this in the in the order to where it is uh, comparable or it's lucrative by the eyes of what they see to the other person. Right. So if I'm selling this to TKO and they look like a prominent or maybe it was Disney beforehand, um, but then there was things coming up and that deal fell through and then there was something else. And they would say it was TKO is now or die or lose it all. So you had to compromise. So maybe they had to come forth and say, look, this is happening at Netflix. And maybe Nick Khan did know them and he worked out something. Look, you can't put out this Netflix deal until the deal is over. Um, and then that being said, what can you do for us? And so scratching each other's nuts is probably the name of the game. And I, clever. <laughs> you know, so, hey, at the end of the day, business is business. We, we, we'll we never know. Maybe we might know the truth someday. Maybe it'll happen, you know, 50 days, 50 days, 50 years later, like the JFK shit. Who knows? You know, but business works in scrupulous, I mean, just fucked up ways. And so remember, this is wrestling and it is business. And they swerve, swerve, swerve. So maybe it was done that way. Look, we're looking to sell, but we can't do it that. And you you know, you can't do that until that's done. And then when that is done, then we want to deal on Netflix. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. 